just begun. We give thanks to God for all that has happened in the months and the years gone past. And as we join together with our friends from you know, here we are, brother, our friends may be joining us later here. Friend, Greenfield should be here, but you're stuck with me until it comes. So another, another one, what about every day with Jesus and sweet on the day before? We're all saying, you all put up on broken. We're all going to see the same age group. Some of us older than others, but everyone will know that one every day with Jesus. All right. Sing that. Sing that. Sing that. Sing
thank God, Jesus, he saves completely past, present, and future under the blood. Let's sing verse 3 now.
if we neglect so great salvation. But Lord, we thank thee for so many that are gathering tonight as they look back to that time, that day in their experience when they came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, whom to know is life eternal. Lord, bless your people tonight. Encourage them. We realize, oh God, that in this world today there is so much to discourage the people of God. But how we thank thee tonight that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank thee, Lord, for our Savior. We thank thee, Lord, that he's a risen and an exalted Savior, that he lives in the power of an endless life. And we thank thee, Lord, that the apostle could say, Wherefore, he is able to save to the very uttermost all they have but come unto God by him. And Lord, should there be one in our gathering tonight, still a stranger to grace unto God. Lord, it's our prayer, it's our heart's desire that they may come to know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. So Lord, be with us now as we wait on in thy holy presence. Bless each one who will take part. We thank thee for them. And we ask thee, Lord, that you'll bless them and help them, give them grace and strength and power even from the very sanctuary of Zion. Thank you, Lord, that God inhabiteth the praises of his people. And we ask you, Lord, tonight, as thy word will go forth and song of the word, that none may be seen save Jesus only. Lord, we will remember the week for us. Lift Jesus higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift them up to eternity. For he said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. So bless us now, Lord, as we we are on in thy holy presence. For we ask all these things in the Savior's name and for God's eternal glory. Amen. 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 It's good to see you. And we're very thankful for the invitation to come and to be with you here tonight uh, in Lisburn. And uh, I'm starting off the program. So it just gets better and better as it goes on. But uh, I'm here. And of course, some of you folk who are at my retirement do uh, knew what happened to my voice. Not very right, pretty. Right. Uh, my friend and colleague, Reverend Trevor Baxter, told the story and had it out of the bag. But it was really true. I had a debate one time with the Mormons. They were getting the worship of the debate. And one of the Mormon elders says, he says, I'm an elder in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And he says, I put a curse on you. And Mr. Baxter said, if you heard Greenfield sing, you know the curse work. Going to sing on. We sing on regardless. I have some, I uh, have many requests since I started to sing, and keep on singing, and uh, so there you are. So, a uh, heavenly gospel hymn, and uh, it's in the key of E flat if you want to play along, whatever. And, uh, and it's just the story of a man and how he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says that any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, the old things are passed away, and all things have become new. Therefore,
the truth of the gospel is that when a man or woman comes to know the Lord Jesus as their Savior, it's different because the old things are passed away and all things have become new. If there's, if there's no change, you begin to wonder. And you wonder, is there any work of grace at all done in the heart of when a man or woman is really saved by God? Uh, he say like the old chorus, the things I used to do, I do them no more. Many years ago, in the old Coleman's mission in Belfast, used to sing a wee hymn about the prodigal. And it was, glory to God, he's from home. Glory to God, he's from home. From drinking the wine and feeding the swine. Glory to God, he's come home. So when the prodigal's come home, thank God, uh, that's the way it is. Then, that, then, then what you want is you want to learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do with him just to tell us about how we have love to know more about the Savior.
man should be the desire of our hearts. We want more and more of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, uh, it's only tonight uh, to welcome Ian here to this morning and uh, to the CWU and uh, this morning our sister and uh, the greatest contender from Trinidad. And that's really for a man from Trinidad and uh, for a new grace and the uh, Admiral Knight and Marvis on a place called Cookstown. And Cookstown are the best family sausages. <laughs> I am going to sing, I'm, I'm from Trillick, so yes, uh, we've been not too far down the road really. I've got, <laughs> I've got my mother-in-law here for a bit of support tonight too, so. But uh, we're here to praise the Lord, and uh, I am going to sing uh, a piece called I Stand Amazed in the Presence. But you might know the words, but I'm going to sing it to a different tune, okay? So, we'll start off with that. And wonder how he could love. 
Jesus redeemed us from sin and from shame. Let us save him to the fold. Why he should love us, we never can know. He is more precious than gold.
There's a roof up above me, I've a good place to sleep. There's food on my table, and shoes on my feet. And you gave me your love, Lord, and your fine family.
sing to you this evening is called God on the Mountain. And it simply reminds us that even though the clouds come and hardship arises into our lives, God is always there. The Bible tells us, of course, that God is the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes. And we have that assurance that God is always there with us. But sometimes circumstances of life come between us and take away our joy. But the thing the song reminds us about is that God is still the same. He's always there and we can trust him even when things get difficult. God on the mountain.
What's important to pray about it? Don't worry. Tell God, praise God, and give Him thanks. And talk to God. In fact, the next speech we're going to do after this one remains with that also. We're talking to God. This speech is called, Thank You, Dear God. Thank you. 
Ireland and uh, the second half to go down the first half it would have been and one famous political commentator he says the trouble is in Northern Ireland he says one half doesn't know what the other two thirds are doing so uh, he must have been a man somewhere along the line let's hear any second the last two verses the light of the valley of death now for me and then I shall go there to the well in that city I will
summer term and he says, so the Queen just got out of the <laughs>
na svojem vaku. I turba i rve, ovdje bi se jedni zbog.
As Alex said, we have a new CD out a few weeks ago, and this song is the title track, God Can, and it simply reminds us of some of the things that only God can do. Only God can change a heart that's been hardened by sin and make it soft and re responsive to him. As Jeremiah tells us, God has promised that he will remove the heart of stone and put a heart of flesh in his place. You know, and that's what we need to see in our land. You're probably aware of the referendum that's been going on down in our side of the border. Sadly, today it appears that that has been um, carried and we now will have abortion in the Republic of Ireland. Sad day for us. Many people are celebrating, but to us it's another step down a moral road, further away from God. But we trust in God and He is overall and greater than all. And He can turn people's hearts back to Him and He can change things and bring His, uh, His um, presence into every situation and give His grace to those who need it every day. God can. <laughs> Oh, 
church was an invitation for men and women to come and to call upon the name of the Lord that they might be saved. You know, if God says something in the Bible once, then we ought to take great heed and pay attention to it. But when God repeats it, and that verse of scripture is found away in the Old Testament scriptures in the book of Joel, Joel chapter 2 and verse 32, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The apostle Peter quoted Joel on the day of Pentecost when he preached in Acts chapter 2 and verse 21. Repeated that same verse. And now Paul again uses those same words in Romans chapter 10. And he says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We boy was asked one day in Sunday school, What's the biggest word in the Bible? And he got it right the first time. He said, Whosoever. Whosoever. You know, that reminds me tonight from that verse of Scripture that God says, Here is a universal opportunity. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Used to sing in the children's meeting, Jesus loves the whosoever, from whatever land they be, and he gently calls them to him for salvation, full and free. All the folk from Holy Scotland and those from the English fields, not forgetting dear old Ireland and the rugged hills of Wales. And north and south and east and west, from the Orient to the Occident, here is a universal opportunity that calls all men, the Bible says, everywhere to repent and says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall. There's no racial barrier, not just for one race of people. There's no social barrier as far as God is concerned. Men and women in this world have all their, their classes and status and all these other things. But the, the Bible tells us it doesn't matter, as old Nicholson said, and we've quoted him tonight, whether you're up on out or whether you're down on out. The gospel of Christ is for you. And there's no educational barrier. It uh, doesn't matter whether we're well educated or whether we're illiterate. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <coughs> this is not a wonderful thing. There's no geographical barrier either. Uh, north, south, east, and west. The Bible says that one day in heaven, out of every kindred, out of every tongue, out of every tribe, out of every nation there will be men and women who are saved, who are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ and who are in heaven for all eternity because they simply heeded God's word. And here's the invitation to whosoever. There's a great book, we've all heard of it, Pilgrim's Progress. It was written by a man called John Bunyan. And John Bunyan was speaking about this verse of scripture on one occasion. And he said, I am so glad that God did not say in his word, if John Bunyan shall call upon the name of the Lord. Because he said, I was immediately think, am I the John Bunyan he was speaking about? Or are there many John Bunyans, in the, are there millions of John Bunyans in this world? He says, no, I'm so glad that God says, whosoever. And the old hymn says, whosoever makes me is better than my name. Anyone, everyone, is not that the same. Believe me, this salvation, present, full and free. Oh, the blessed whosoever that makes me. So there's a universal opportunity. And then it says here, whosoever shall call. There's an unmistakable simplicity. All you have to do is call. There are many so-called great religions in this world. And they have people doing all sorts of things. And 
I'm trying their very best. I'm making efforts of going on pilgrimages and doing this, that, and the other thing in order to find merit with God. But the Bible says it's so simple. That's why so many people miss it. It just says, whosoever shall call. And you know as well as I do, even a little child can call. God says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember that story in the New Testament when Peter wanted to walk on the water and the Lord Jesus bid him come to me and he began and he stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the water but then when he, he, he felt the wind and he, he saw the waves and he began to sink and what did he do? He called. He said, Lord, save me. And immediately, the Lord Jesus Christ put in his hand and asked him in his hand. Remember that old Philippian jailer, late Pastor Ivan Thompson. I used to say, when Paul and Silas were in prison in Philippi, he says they were singing and praying and all the prisoners heard them and God heard them. And God sent an earthquake and he says, God, the Bible says, shoot the prison. And Pastor Thompson used to say, it was jailhouse rock and Presley hadn't even been born. All right. My God shook the prison and all of the bands were loose and the doors were open. And the old Philippine jailer, for fear of his very life, he was going to take his own life rather than have his life being taken from him. Do you remember Paul said, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. What did he say? What must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That night, that old Philippian jailer called on the name of the Lord. And you know, God makes salvation simple. You go across this world and you look at all the great libraries that there are in this world and all the very deep spiritual theological books that have been written about the Bible and about the great theology of the Gospels of Christ. And some of those books are so hard to understand because salvation is such a wonderful thing and how that a holy God could bring sinful man into union with himself. What way will a holy God do it? And one book was called Salvation or redemption accomplished and applied. And there's much uh, difficult things to be reconciled. But as far as man is concerned, God, all the hard things are in God's part and on God's side. And God has made it so simple for you, so simple for me. God says salvation is like opening the door. He says, I am the door. And by me, if any man enter, then he shall be saved. God says salvation is so simple. He said to the woman at the well, if you drink this water, you'll thirst again. If you drink the water that I give you, you'll never thirst again. Salvation is simple. Salvation is just like opening the door. It's like water. The Bible says, as many as receive him, to them give he the power to become the sons of God, and to them to believe on his name. For the reason of sin is yet, but the gift of God is eternal life. Someone came, and they brought you a gift. They thought about it, they purchased it, they may have gift wrapped it, they put your name on it, they present it to you, and all you have to do is take it. God said, if you receive Christ, you receive the gift of eternity. See, here's an all mistake of simplicity. But then you notice this 
says, Whosoever shall call, that's the, the great opportunity, the universal opportunity, that's the almost thing of something, but says, Upon the name of the Lord, that's a unique personality. Because I want to tell you that our salvation is in Christ and in Christ alone. There is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There is only one name in which salvation is found. And the Bible says there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we are saved than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is not in religion. Salvation is not in a creed. Salvation is not in baptism. Salvation is not in good works. It's not in church membership. It's not in holding office of the church. Salvation is in Christ. And in Jesus Christ alone. That's why the hymn writer said, I have no other argument. I want no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. And we can sing tonight, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. My, there's not a friend like the holy Jesus. No, not one. One who went all the way to Calvary and took your sins and my sins and his own body on the tree. And he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we in turn might be made the righteousness of God in him. <coughs> One Savior says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man, no matter who he is, cometh unto the Father but by me. Then Jesus, uh, the Bible reminds us here, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and say, shall be saved. Here's an undeniable security. The Bible tells us about the great scope of the gospel is for the whosoever. It tells us how simple it is just to call upon the, name of the great personality, Jesus Christ and Christ alone. But it says if you come and you call, it doesn't say, well, you might be saved, or there's a possibility you could be saved, or maybe. It says, whosoever shall call shall be saved. The old hymn says, the moment my all I ventured upon Christ's atoning blood, the Holy Spirit entered, and I had peace with God. The question is, have you called upon the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he your own and personal Savior? Do you say, Fred, I'm so thankful there was a time in my experience when I came as a servant of Jesus. And I confess my need, I confess my state before him, and I ask him in the words of a little children's chorus, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today and take all my sin away and come in to my heart, Lord Jesus. Thank God he answers the prayer. Poor, sinful soul calls upon the name of the Lord. Jesus says, you shall be saved. And in the book of Romans, there are many, many wonderful verses about salvation. And even in that chapter, the Bible says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then if you have never trusted him, you've heard all about him tonight, and the message in that song, and even from this one text of Holy Scripture. Well, thank God I can tell you on the authority of this book, the Word of God, that whosoever, that means you, shall call, that's so simple, upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And we are your servants for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake. If you're concerned about that, you're concerned about your need of salvation, dear woman, came to the gospel mission, I was meeting the last Sunday night, I 
as Caleb and Moshe said, I felt I needed God and my life. I find God, she called upon the name of the Lord, and she was saying, You can call. You can be saved. And you can know that you're saved. And you can be sure that you're saved, that your sins are forgiven, and that it's well with your soul. And when this fleeting life is over, then for you it will be to be absent from the body and to be in gold and present with the Lord. May the Lord bless these three thoughts for our hearts going to sing our closing hymn. And it's the hymn number 47. Hymn number 47. To God be the glory, be the things he hath done. To love thee the world that he gave us his Son. To give you this life for atonement for your sin. And open the life in that all may go in. Second verse says, Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of God. To every believer, the promise of God. The vilest offender, no matter who he is, who she is, who truly believes that woman of Jesus are pardoned to see. Number 47, and we'll stand together by the same thing. <laughs>
and to call upon the name of the Lord and start out for heaven and for home. Lord, we thank thee again for this food. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless with your bodies and bless the kind hands that prepared it. Bless our fellowship together and later take us all to our homes for the same thing. Bless the work of God in this corner of thy vineyard. Remember especially the gospel mission as it comes. We pray, Lord, in the will of God that many may be the same of the Lord. And thou wouldst be glorified. That there be a breath of old fashioned Holy Ghost revival over this little province of ours, O God, send the fires of the Bible. Lord, may it spread right across the, the land of Ireland and may it go across the, the holy Arabian.
Folks, it's been great for us to be here this evening. We're going to finish off with one that we hope you know, because he is the big face giant in the King of Animals. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. Thank you for being so supportive.